Hey guys, Fleep here. Uh, today what I've got for you is a quick uh, tutorial on how to make wall hacks for Direct3D games. So games that use DirectX and we can put wall hacks on that. So this method of course is only for Direct3D games but um, most games out there are Direct3D. There's a few OpenGL but uh, today we'll only cover the uh, DirectX ones. Um, so I'm just going to show you first thing as usual. I'm going to show you this in action and then we'll carry on with the tutorial. Now I'm guessing most of you guys um, I've seen this uh, multiplayer. That seems fine to me. So let's just do that. So I just injected the uh, the hack. You've probably seen this many times in my videos before, but you know I'll just show you it quickly. Um, so yeah, that seems fine to me. Um, so yeah, um, what you're gonna need for this uh, tutorial is the menu. Now, if you haven't completed your own by following my direct 3D menu tutorial, I recommend you go there. Now, if you don't feel like doing that menu from scratch. There's, there's a link in the description for you where you can download the menu yourself and then continue your project from there. Um, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste some stuff in. I want to spawn some bots. So this is something we'll go th we'll cover when we're doing our. Um, oops, this is going terribly bad. Just do that and that. There you go. Let's put a few bots in. And uh, the wall hack connection is pretty straightforward. Apologies on the freezage, but it's because of the. Um, so there you go. So here are the wall hacks, as you can see, it's freezing quite a bit. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, uh, my team is green, their team is red, and so on. Um, and that's pretty much it. There's nothing to this. Y if you've seen on on my um, latest tutorial, the facts and recommendations one, you'll see that. Uh, well, this in action quite well. N there's not even a chance of me playing this because it's too freezing. So I'm going to close this quickly. And that's pretty much it. It's very straightforward. There's nothing to it. Now, the code is quite simple because you've done the harder part, which is the menu. And now all we need to do is get an event, um, a function call in the DirectX library, and then just put our code there. And I'll explain that to you as we do it. So first thing I'm going to need you guys to do is to download this folder called uh, Files Required. And that should be in your description. Now, a quick warning for you guys. I forgot to say this on my last video. Um, there's an injector here, right? And uh, some people are having problems with the um, with the injector. You can't extract the files out the uh, the zip file because the injector, uh, if you go on antiviral, so it will flag it as something dangerous and it won't let you extract it out. Like Kaspersky, I think did that. Um, so basically, if you go on antivirus, either shut it off or if you don't trust me, then I can't do anything else for you. Um, Basically, all you need to do is copy, uh, not copy, get these and extract them to a folder outside. I've got mine in folder files required, and then we can carry on with the tutorial. Now, whenever this asks you for permission for something, just do it because all this does, and the reason why it gets flagged as a, a virus is because it changes memory within a program. So what we're doing is we're changing memory within COD4, and we're we're injecting memory into it. That's the idea there. Um, so yeah, make sure you got your uh, menu available, right? So I've got mine. I've put it on the side here. I've got mine called in a folder called Direct 3D. Um, well, if you don't have it, just download it from the description, and then we can continue the tutorial. So um, as you saw in the beginning, I use this for COD 4. Now this will work for most games, but I recommend, I highly recommend you have. Um, I highly recommend you using this for Call of Duty 4. Otherwise, I don't. You know, it's it loses its use a bit because um, some of the stuff I'll do is COD 4 specific like the making of bots and so on now if you don't have COD 4 you can still do it but it'll be a little bit more difficult for you but you should be able to still do it nicely uh, you just have to get the um, the wall hack stuff online instead of against bots because that's what I'm going to use um, let me think so yeah make sure you got those files and uh, a little common sense is necessary here guys and like my other tutorials this is step by step so if you as long as you can follow the step by step you're fine now you still need some common sense really I can't you know this I am getting a lot of noob questions and those are okay but especially when I'm getting same on the same video loads of times so just make sure you check the comments if you got a problem and hopefully someone's already fixed that otherwise PM me or just leave a comment um, so yeah, I think what we're going to start off by doing, so we've got uh, the, um, so you download this, and this is, if you're using for COD4, if you're not, then uh, ignore this part. So this here, what we're going to do is we're going to install the um, the bots mod. So make sure you've got um, COD4 multiplayer 
uh, shortcut on your desktop and I'm going to go to open file location and then there's a folder here called mods and then copy that folder into that one right so you got mod warfare and then you've got P PZ bot okay and once you've got that then go to your shortcut again so just paste that folder normally and then you need you need this text here so you got set uh, FS game and so on you need this text here so what you can do if you could don't feel like writing that from scratch go to installation folder on the PZ bot and um, let me think mm -hmm. should be here at some point um, yeah so here it is so just copy this text uh, just in front of it okay so let me just see if I can find that yeah so just copy this and go here and from plus set make sure there's a space from your beginning bit so mine's a steam app yours would probably be the same and then just apply it okay and that means your bots will be loaded by default now once you do want to test this online just delete uh, this line here where it starts with mods so just delete that and then apply it again that's all you have to do now um, yeah so this is about it now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off the tutorial so this is pretty straightforward now I will be aiming to doing one of these a week uh, sometimes they'll be more complex than others and uh, I will be doing the um, well the whole list of things you've got there that like you got wall hacks, short custom crosshair, no recoil, unlimited I and mean, I know I've done some of these before but I will be doing them just so we get a complete hack. So I really recommend you got COD for if you don't and you prefer I if you're a bit of a new guy, I recommend you go find somewhere to download it like a torrent site or whatever. As usual I can't give you the link because I can get myself into trouble. And then come back and then continue the tutorial. If you don't then you need to be and have a bit of common sense. You need to be a bit clever and a bit of common sense to uh, complete this by yourself now um, and I will be doing one a week or so because at the moment I c I'll probably record them all at once and then I'll upload them once a week because um, like I said to you guys I've, I've gone back to uni and then I'm a bit busy most of the time so uh, just so you guys can keep getting content and stuff and I don't get too many people mad at me yeah so um, at this point you should have the whole um, the whole solution hopefully and uh, so let's start with the wall hack part so let me just read my notes here now one of the files you should have right you should have on your files required folder uh, yeah, leave that up this is the mods folder I don't worry about I don't want that so files required folder let's move this here move that over there so what you should have really is a um, colors text file right and this text file we're going to use so as you can see I put four colors here but we only need two of them um, so in case you want different colors your own thing I've never tried white by the way I found this online um, and all these are they're byte arrays okay so don't worry about how they're done because I don't know how they're done I know they're basically um, one big hexadecimal value broken down into tons of different bytes so don't worry about that um, because there's other ways of doing this but this is like the simplest one I found so copy that and go into your hacks dot so click here, edit files, um, yeah, just leave that open. So go to your hacks.h and just be below you define here, paste that. So these are the colors we can use for our hacks, okay? For our wall hacks, sorry, yep. So, excuse me, the next thing we're going to do, do is define apply a wall hack prototype here. So, void hacks and then go apply wall hack now we're going to do that there and what we need to do here I'm just going to check out my notes make sure everything's good uh, hacks.h yeah so what we need to send in there we need to send in there a couple of things so let me just take you through those it's a bit of a few um, not variables but f yeah few variables I guess need to go in there so first thing we're going to send is the directory device so you can just copy this line above it doesn't really matter so you don't have to write that all yourself from scratch uh, close that for now I'll bring that up when I need it so you got that and then we're going to say direct 3d primitive uh, direct yeah so then we go uh, direct 3d device oops just got that there so we go direct 3d direct 3d own capitals um just apply wall hack. Just gonna close this quickly and then we go direct three D primitive, is that right? Sorry, just gotta check my notes quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, so direct 3D uh, primitive primitive type. I don't know if you guys can see this probably by the way, so I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit. Primitive type, and um, we're going to declare that device. Next one, we're going to say. Um, so yeah, we can we can just um, copy this from the so vertex index. So we can just copy this from the um, the draw index primitive, but it doesn't really matter. We can just go like that, and then we'll go uint, which is an unsigned integer, uint min vertex index, followed by uint again num vertices. And like I said, this is just a clone of the uh, draw index primitive function. The only way I, reason why I did this is so we can call it outside, and we'd have much code on Direct3D dev 9.cpp here. So, because that's mainly DirectX functions, we don't want to put our own code there, that's why we've got a hacks class. So, uh, num vertices, uh, and then we got uint start index, and then finally uint, oops, uint uh, prim count. Okay, and then close that. And that's our apply wall hack function done. Now, what we need to do next is, so we've def defined it. And uh, we need to go to uh, draw index primitive at. So if we go here, search for this one, draw index primitive, and that's where we're going to go now. Um, and that's where we're going to write our code. So we're going to say hacks dot apply wall hack. Okay. And uh, we're going to go for. We're going to put our device in. So basically, it's just a copy of this. First thing we put in is our device. And everything else is exactly the same as here. So to do that should work just fine. So we've got device, uh, yep. So just copy that. And all we're saying is take this function outside. So we don't write any code here because it's just, well, other than the apply wall hack. Because if we have a problem, we want to be fixing it at our function, or in our class, obviously. And I think that's a bit better. Actually, leave a space there. You know, why not? Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to write our. Uh, apply wall hack function within C++ so let's go into our um, hacks.c++ oops uh, I already wrote a bit of this earlier because um, I had a problem with the recording but don't worry about that we're gonna write this again uh, what we're gonna do is gonna say if and don't worry about this at the moment because I've already done um, that this is something we'll define later so let me just write this first and I'll explain what we're doing so spetsnaz spetsnaz underscore op for uh, and then we say if we, you can put an else, it doesn't really matter because there isn't any other alternative, I guess. Marines SAS. Now, a fact here the reason why they're both different is because Spetsnaz are never against top four, and Marines are never against SAS. So it's always one of these against one of these. That's the way it works. So that's how we define which, um, which player is drawn different. So, um, a texture for a character that is from the SAS or the Marines, for example, is going to be different. So each um, independent thing. So the Marines have different to everyone, and SAS have got their own independent one as well. So because they're SAS and they're Marines and Spetsnaz and Op4, each of them have their own textures. So the designers at uh, Infinity Ward or wherever design them differently, and that means they have different textures. We just need to find out each texture that is on the Marines and each texture that's on the SAS and so on. So, and then what we do here is we say direct 3D device. Oops, 3D device. Uh, and then we're going to set render state. Okay, and I'll explain what this does in a second. So all capitals direct 3D RS underscore Z enable. So what we're doing here is we're turning off the Z buffer now. All games, oops, that should be, and then false because we want to turn it off. All games have a way of displaying. So, in order to know, um, obviously, their own engine, they've got some good stuff to do that. In order to know if they should draw a player on screen or not, they ask themselves. So, they've got their own formulas and stuff to calculate this. But what they do is they say, basically, is this player behind the wall? Now, if he is behind the wall, then we turn, we we disabled we enable the Z buffer on that sorry trying to make sense of this we enable the Z buffer on that so by default it's enabled uh, and now if the player is in front of you so if he's like right next to you then it displays him because he's within sight and he's not behind any wall and that way we 